Honestly, the gym can be an intimidating place. You finally mustered up the courage, you're gonna take control of your health and fitness and go get that first lift in. You haven't really lifted since high school, and to be honest with yourself, you were probably spending most of your time just talking to your friends or trying to hit on some cute girl in class. You really have no idea what you're doing. But either way, you now find yourself walking into XYZ Fitness Temple only to be greeted by some gym bro in his too tight polo who then introduces you to his equally douchey looking coworker who sells you on the Primo package so you can have 24 access to all locations and look just as douchey as he does in your too tight polo. You get ready in the locker room, you walk out into a sea of machines and weights, grunting silverback gorillas and more spandex than you know what to do with. Your first thought, what am I even doing here? Your second thought, what am I even supposed to do here? As a beginner in the gym, trying to build a routine, trying to build a habit, build that consistency can be really hard. In fact, there's honestly a million and one reasons to not go to the gym, and there's a million and one reasons to not even start thinking about going to the gym. In fact, studies show that 92% of people will never even start a goal that they set for themselves. And I'm not just talking about New Year's resolutions or just health and fitness goals, but any goal in general, whether that's work, relationship, or your health and fitness, 92% of people won't even start. So what do we do with that? It honestly reminds me of being in college and my professor would give me a research paper to write where I could pick my own subjects, they'd give me all the tools necessary, and basically all I had to do was research and write the paper. At the get-go, I'd be really excited about it because I'd pick a subject that I was genuinely interested in, but then as the months would go by, I would never start. It'd be one week away from having to turn in the paper and I would just throw something together and turn in something that was far below average and what I actually could have done. All this to say is starting's difficult. And when you start, having routine and understanding how to spend your time most efficiently is even more difficult. Doesn't matter if you're the college student or a business exec or the person working on their health and fitness, getting started and finding that routine is the hardest part. I've found that health and fitness is kind of the common denominator across all these different genres and types of people simply because it's the area where people seem to know the least amount or don't spend enough time researching to actually understand how to build a good routine for a beginner as someone new in the gym. At the end of the day, most people love the idea of having washboard abs or being able to bench two plates or have that fat booty or be able to live pain free and not have lower back pain, knee pain, hip pain, whatever that is. But the problem is starting. And then once you start, the problem is, what do I do? What is my routine? Well, if you're that person, we're gonna talk about the best routine for beginners in the gym. Follow along and let's do this. All right, we are getting out of here. Basically, was at the gym already. Got my workout in, trained some clients, and now heading to the mall to get some shopping in. This morning has just flown by. It's already like two o'clock and I have so much stuff to get in. So uh, we're gonna get after it. This man, he's on the phone. He's not even paying attention. <laughs> Let me in. Goodness gracious. Sorry, I'm running late. All right, let's rip. Yo, so when it comes to going to the gym, building a routine, first things first is location, location, location. You need to have a gym that you are going to. And now not all gyms are created equal. At the end of the day, I will say the best gym is the gym that you go to. That being said, there are some factors that we can think about when picking a gym. And so starting off with location, is it close to where you are? Is it on your way to work? Is it on your way home from work? Is it close to your house? Your gym should be a place that is convenient for you to go to. Again, the best gym is the gym that you go to. Pick one that you are actually going to have the time to show up for. Number two is community, and this is really important because 
when you first start going to the gym, it's really easy to like be the, the lone wolf where you're just kind of like keeping your head down. You might feel embarrassed, you might feel shy, but the reality is, is that in order for you to continue to go, you need to build relationships and you need to build community. And there are gyms that are incredibly good at building community and relationships. The gym I go to in Minneapolis, Los Campeones, has an incredible community and it's one of the reasons why I go. Every gym has an ethos, they have this presence, and we wanna find a gym that doesn't make money off of us not showing up. And I'm gonna throw a gym under the bus right now, I don't even care, but Planet Fitness is a gym that literally makes money on you not showing up. And so don't go to a gym that makes money on you not showing up, okay? Go to a gym that wants you to show up. Not all gym communities are created equal, and so we wanna find a community that is high invitational and high challenge. And what I mean by this is, if we think about this on a moving scale, if a gym is too welcoming, where it's a place where like everyone belongs, it's truly a place where you probably won't be challenged as much. Versus if you are at a gym where it's really high challenge, it's going to be a place that's not gonna be welcoming enough and you're not gonna be able to build community, which is equally as bad as the other way around. And so we need to find that kind of space between being high invitational and high challenge so that you can have a community that wants you to be a part of the team but as a team, they also want to win and they want you to win. And that's where the high challenge part comes into play. Last but not least then is going to be equipment. I put this last on my list just because at this stage of gyms being in the world, most gyms have good enough equipment for you to get your workout in. And if you're working with a trainer who's building a program for you, they're gonna be able to build you a program that is going to work really well with whatever equipment might be at that gym. But again, at the end of the day, the gym that you go to is going to be the best gym. So go to your gym, find community, and find workouts that you enjoy doing. Cause we're going to the moon. I think it's time to take a ride. We're gonna travel across the Milky Way, unafraid, in outer space. Holding on to the good So principle number two is look the part. Now this might seem kind of superficial, but honestly, if you look the part, you're more likely to become the part. In Atomic Habits, James Clear talks about identity out changes versus outcome in changes. And what that means is basically that when you start telling yourself that you are someone, you are a fitness person, you are an entrepreneur, you are a healthy person, it actually causes you to start asking the question, what does a healthy person do? What does a fitness person wear? And those are really good questions to ask yourself when you're beginning and you're trying to start that fitness routine. And so I always encourage people, don't be the person who gets the gym membership and then shows up in some ratty old sweatpants some triple XL Hanes t-shirt that no one wants to wear anymore, but apparently you want to wear it in the gym because it's all you have. No, take the time to buy the gear, go to Nike, get the right stuff. And I'm not telling you you need to spend a fortune on stuff, but it's more of this identity piece of becoming the person you want to be. Don't show up at the gym not prepared. Have knee sleeves, have workout shorts, have workout shoes, have everything you need so that you can remove any excuse to fail. Once you have everything you need, you can show up, put your best foot forward, and actually be the athlete, be the fitness person. The way you present yourself for yourself is actually the biggest thing. You're not wearing the clothes for other people. You're not wearing the clothes for the trainers at the gym. You're wearing the clothes for yourself so you can put that best foot forward every time you walk into the gym and you're gonna hit that workout. Principle number two, uh, find a spirit guide, find a coach. When you're a beginner and you're looking for a routine and you want the perfect routine, honestly, the quickest way from starting something to being excellent at something is having a coach that's a business coach, life coach, or a fitness coach slash personal trainer 
your spirit guide is going to be your quickest way from A to B. The benefits are a lot. First and foremost is knowledge. Having someone who knows sets, reps, progressive overload, velocity, load, endurance, strength, conditioning, all those different aspects of health, wellness, fitness, that coach is there to give you that knowledge, give you the understanding to then apply those tools. They can also give you encouragement where you're having bad days, you're having a hard time making it to the gym, you're having a hard time with your nutrition. Your coach is there to be your encourager, to be the person to cheer you on. Last but not least, they offer accountability, being someone who's going to check in on you. Are you hitting your macros? Are you eating the foods you're supposed to be eating? Are you getting your steps? All those good things that I've talked about and shown me in my different videos, that is what a coach is there for. Everyone that I work with and train, I put them through my app. It's really slick, it's really simple. The workouts are right there. Movement videos, demonstration videos, sets, reps, nutrition programming, everything's built into one place to make it really simple so that you can have the knowledge, the encouragement, the accountability. It's all right there. And I get to use programs and put you through something that is specific to you and also using principles that have worked for tons of other people that I've worked with. Having a spirit guide, having that personal trainer is optional. You don't have to do this to have a good routine, but the benefits are incredible when you actually work with a coach. Last stop of the, well, second last stop of the day. Get some afternoon coffee. Uh, the, the caffeine addiction is real. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Principle number four. Principle number four is find a program. Now this principle goes back to principle number three, find a spirit guide, having someone who can help coach you through the process. Finding a good program is the process itself. And as a beginner, you actually get a lot of benefits in newbie gains, and I've talked a lot about this in the past, but it's really hard to screw up when you're just starting out as a lifter. You can pretty much go to the gym, lift weights, eat a decent amount of protein, and you're gonna get some type of result through just doing that. But there's a better way, and that's where having a perfect routine as a beginner is so important. The two most important things to focus on when you're building a program as a beginner or as a newbie or looking for a program is, one, we need to manage fatigue and recovery, and number two, we need to keep you injury free. There's a lot of exercises that are really good, but the risk to reward isn't worth it as a beginner. Certain movements are just better to stay away from until you get good enough to properly do them. Things like Olympic lifts, wow, they're really cool, they're really fun, they're really explosive. Unless you're trying to be an Olympic lifter, you probably don't need to do that. Also, barbell deadlifts, which again, a great movement, perfect for someone who has a little bit more experience in working out, but as a beginner, doing a dumbbell Romanian deadlift or even doing some type of machine deadlift is going to be a lot more beneficial for you in keeping you injury free. And then as far as managing fatigue, we wanna kind of think about how many days a week are we working out? I'd say if you're a beginner, two to three times a week is all you need. You don't need to be the person who jumps into the deep end and wants to work out six days a week as a beginner. You honestly can get really good gains two to three times a week. What should these workouts look like? Well, these workouts should look like full body, total body workouts. The reason why we do full body and total body workouts is because it helps us manage recovery. We're not going to get any muscle unit to complete failure in a 45 minute to an hour workout that's total body. This allows you to properly recover so you can hit your next workout in the next day or two following the previous workout. For these full body lifts, we really wanna focus on compound movements to get the most bang for buck. And so I would say four compound movements in an exercise, we can do a little bit of accessory work but then the rest of it should be some type of metabolic conditioning or cardio, just again, to manage that fatigue and stay injury free. So, total body workouts is going to be the best bang for buck in your first probably two to three months of working out. From there, we can move into more of a bro split, if you will, which would be more of a traditional push legs pull, where again, we're only working out three days a week, Monday we do push, Wednesday we do legs, and then Friday we do pull, and then we'd have Saturday and Sunday to recover before we'd go into it. 
and that would be a really good sweet spot for honestly almost your first year. Once we move past that, that's when we can really look into upper lower splits, doing asynchronous splits, synchronous splits, and different things like that that get a little bit more detail focus versus really just focusing on getting the newbie gains in the best way possible. So if you can remember to manage fatigue and recovery by doing total body workouts and only working out two to three times a week, and then also focusing on movements that will keep you injury free, those are going to be the best programs for you. I built a program that I think is really good for beginners. I'm gonna attach it below in the comments. It's gonna be a three day total body workout and it's gonna really cover the basis of what I'm talking about in this video as far as programming goes. So it's yours for free. Just click on the link, take a look at it and get your workouts in. Yo, that is all I have for you. If you haven't yet, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment. I'd love to have a conversation. And again, if you're a beginner, don't feel like you're doing this on your own. There's so much support. There's so many people out here like myself who wanna help people like you get the best out of their health, out of their fitness. And so thanks for watching. Until next time, peace. This is